Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to the channel. Uh, I am Corey Pratt and this is Craving Cars. And uh, basically what I'm gonna do is a little intro here. Um, we just got back not that long ago from Adventure Van Expo in uh, Evergreen, Colorado. And uh, as a matter of fact, I'm gonna have a link in the description below of a full walkthrough video that we already did of the show. But there was some, well, some really good vans, some cool builds and things like that that we did a little bit more detailed walkthrough got some kind of behind the scenes of the builders of what's going on uh, with it, you know, a little more detail about it, the power systems and just some of the choices they went with. And uh, well, we filmed that. And so we have a bunch of vans kind of built up. And so I put it together in one just conglomerate of a video right here. So this is just me inter introducing, this is what you're about to watch. A little more detailed walkthrough interviews uh, and things of some cool van builds at the Adventure Van Expo. So. There we go, that's all we got. Uh, hey, subscribe to the channel if this is the kind of things you wanna see more of because we do plan on doing a lot more videos like this, including some product review type of things. So if you like to see those kind of things, uh, make sure you uh, subscribe, hit that bell icon, and uh, so you can get further notifications. Like this video, share it, all that good stuff. But without further ado, let's get to the vans. Now, obviously it's a van expo, so we have plenty of vans. Here's a ProMaster. And uh, I just want to kind of show you the layout of a ProMaster. They have a lower floor uh, step up than all the rest of them because they are front wheel drive vans. Um, so they also have a step down, you know, to the back like that. And, uh, but here you go, nice big galley. I think that looks really nice. You got a nice little lounge over here that and then you've got there's your bed your your garage space all your storage up top i mean same kind of microwave and we're getting rained on that's a cold rain too there you go there's your outside shower here and your power system on this side but yeah so very cool just kind of show you right there i mean it may seem like a lower van too but these are still uh over six feet of of ceiling space here so I, that I, even i can stand up in these at 6-2. Fancraft. And a couple little options here. So these are, hey, check this out. These are actually on the lower cost. Here's a little bit to check out Vancraft if you like. A little bit of a build. What they do? Bench, a little sink right out here. Your thing that lifts up. I'm gonna bet it's either probably the like a Dometic type of fridge or something will fit right in there. You got a burner, a induction burner right there. And a lot of little uh, cubbies. You're only gonna get the one turnaround. Seat. Minecraft. There's a little look at the storage. Where did you install it? It's under the Hot water heater. Sportsmobile. They got a flag there. They got a flag there. They got a flag with a guy right there and a gal right there. You guys got to wave. Hi, hi, hi. Uh, they are a uh, the ultimate adventure vehicle. Uh, well, since 1961. Oldest Class B manufacturer in the country. But this one's a little different than mostly. This has your pop top thing. We don't have a pop top kind of done ordeal. Travel Sleep four, travel four, uh, and you guys build the entire inside out, right? You mind if I take a uh, walk around a little bit? All right, let's go. Let's uh, take a look at a uh, sportsmobile. So, obviously, get your outside table. I always think that's a plus. You always got to do something like that. And but this is cool too. So you've got your your galley, you got your sink up here, and you got how many inches is that? How big is this? So you got over two feet of extra space that pops up just like that. That's really cool. Huh. I don't think I've ever seen that kind of hinge thing. Not the hinge, but the the support. That was really neat. All right, let's go. So um, they can add a seat in here. This track right, it'll go in this track right here. Just like that one over there. Nice little nice little L track. And you got, well, you can put all kinds of stuff. You can 
do all kinds of things. That L-Track is strong enough to hold seats, a little bit different than the L-Track that's in the back. That, that you track. Gotcha. Of course, you got your swivel seats. You've got a nice little turn top table here. Um, fridge and freezer? Fridge, fr freezer's up top. Freezer up top. So this fridge is one door, freezer's door inside. There's a separate door on the freezer. Shower. Oh, I got gotcha. you. So. Let's do the shower real quick. Oh, we have a shower. I'm going to sit back and. There we go. Shower. And so that just hooks up to the ceiling. Raises up. Magnetic, you got the little magnetic going to pan. You just got your little fixture. You got your little wand in there. Take a shower. When you lift it up, all the water goes down into the gray water tank. Right, right, right. Uh, what about toilet? It's got a porta potty right here where she slides that stick between the two front seats and uses it. That's all she needs. Okay, the perfect. Yep, There's that's basically. There's oh, I see. It almost looked like that was a double door, the way that black line is in the middle. I that's see, what it yeah. looked like to me. That black line is there because when you open it, it hits here. We don't want to dent the refrigerator. Got it. That's what we did with that one. I got it. So you added that. You add that we to add the door. That. Little, 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 again, platform, well, fridge. how big is that? How big is that fridge? It's uh, five point two cubic feet. Okay. Well, it's a lot bigger than ours. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> Microwave. Um, <laughs> just a just storage. That's just a closet. Just a closet. All of our stuff in there. Bingo, bingo. Closet. All that stuff right there. Yep. That's a good spot for that. Right here. Again, climb up there with the ladder. And then we've got. Diesel heater down low. I don't got a light up there right now. It's probably not even going to see at this point. But uh, how big is this bed up top? It is 40 by 78. That's that's a good that's a good size bed. Okay. Great, great for one. It's it's the, it's the length size. So some you know some of my my size can can fit in there no problem at all. Right. And you still got you got flares on the side yet too, don't you? We got flares on the side, so this is about seventy-eight also. So like there you go. Four. So and you, the garage in the back, the sliding tray. If I saw that. Right, right. Uh, that is a big sink. That's a big sink. You can wash your hair in the sink. You don't even need a shower. What do you think of that? With with your obviously you got to have a faucet like that when you got a sink like that. That's for sure. That's the difference between us and Storyteller. We do it exactly the way you want. That's just open storage. There's more storage in there. More storage. More storage, more storage. Oh, the toilet on the bottom. Toilet bottom. So like a little cassette, like a Dometic kind of cassette toy. Is that kind of what's in there? Cassette fix. This is a this is a portable, so you just bring it out. It's got two sections to it. No, you're right. Cassette is you're right. Cassette is fixed. I guess ours isn't considered a cassette, is it? It's a it's a portable one. It's a Dometic, but you can move it wherever you want. That's like this porta potty. Got it. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So that's Yep. So they got. Well, technically speaking, you want to compare it to a storyteller. It has all the same marks. It's just a different design. It's just a different design, yeah. Different design. Yes. What kind of battery uh, yes. system yes. do you have in this? This one's got a 600 amp hour lithium battery. That's a good size. Yeah. It's a 12 volt system. We do 48 volt systems. It's up, to, it's up to the customer. So it just depends on how much battery you want. How much battery you want. We, you'll we, find we, a way. We ask them what their intended use is. They tell us, and then we try to match the water system to it, the battery system to it, the bed size to it. Well, size well to I've it. also noticed, so I mean, you've got a bit, so we've got, what, the 12 kilowatts, so like a, oh, close to a, right around a thousand amp hour right. kind of thing. Yeah. But I get that, but see, we don't really have solar. So which means we're always using it. So a sunny day like this, we got 90 watts of solar, which isn't doing much. What kind of solar do you put on this? Well, this particular one's got 250 watts of solar. Okay. We're totally full of DC power. We put 137 watts. And that's solar. that's kind of the thing of it. If you got solar, you've got a way that it's constantly charging on you. Even if it's how it's been partly sunny out here today, it's still giving more charge than we're giving. So we almost need the bigger battery because we don't have a way of charging it right now. Possibly, yeah. I'm not sure how quick your alternator recharges. That's a key. Well, that's the thing. We're leaving it parked for three days. So, so it's so it's kind of like one of those things. But uh, the alternator has a second alternator. It, it does really well there. Yeah. It, it'll do very well there. If, if we're, we know we're going somewhere every day, every other day, then there's never an issue. We can run the inverter all day long if we wanted to and not have a problem. What, that's kind of what but if we're going to be stationary for a while, that's where we're thinking, do we add more solar? Because that'll help keep it topped up so you don't need a thousand amp hour battery if you've got plenty of solar i guess is what you i'm saying to match everything to the to everything. there you go you want to have a solar system try to match the battery alternator match the battery yep so you're charging them efficiently yeah so well very cool uh i like that i wasn't expecting the shower that is a really cool shower and if you guys didn't realize so when it comes up these are the hooks up here i'm assuming right there you go you got that right there that's awesome and you've got You've got uh, window on both sides. You've got storage on that side. You've got some cubby storage. On that. I like the lights too. That's a nice touch. Let's go take a look at the garage. Too bad we didn't have the bikes so you could see them, but we had the bikes all stuck in here. Oh yes, and that's a big tray. We got the tray, so it's wide enough to where you get on the side. And that's the key. If you make it too wide, you can't get on the side of it because your doors don't open all the way because we got tire and we got storage on it. That's true. So that's key right here. And then we put another L track in here. We got L track up here. We got storage up here. 
This has got 30 gallon water tank in it on this side. Exterior shower in the back here also. So you got the exterior. Here. So if it's nice weather, you're outside. Nice so you got what battery this side, water that side? Battery this side because we've got more heat. You want to evenly distribute the weight load. Put the heavy weight on this side, light weight over here. The water can be up and down. Be you're right. Weight. This is true. But 30 gallons, that's good. That's a good amount of water too. What's that? Do I got a door to go through? No, that's the shower. It could be a door if you don't want the shower there, but that's okay. the shower that falls down. That's so again, that's how we do it with customers. They go, I don't want that shower there. Or they want the bigger van and we put a shower in that's a full size stand up shower and close in. Right, so you're just doing. So again, it's all up to the side. This is the smallest van. So now, how about this? Are you doing different floor plans? 100%. Or like, do you have, I'm going to rephrase that, set floor plans that you do that where you can kind of modify we each do. floor plan a little bit? Or we you do. just. We have standard floor plans that are the most popular, but then we have customers that have so much experience. Like you, you got a storyteller, you've used it all year for years, and you go, I know exactly what I want had a tent, worked their way all the way up to a big motor home. Now they're going, it's too big for me. I want a small one. They want this class B and they know exactly what they want. They come to us, we build it to their specs. Right on. Or we'll do a spec van that we know works. And we do quite a few of those. We stock those. We'll build those, you know. Got it. Every month, have a couple of those ready to go. So now this floor plan right here, is this basically one of your set floor plans right here? No, this is kind of one of the new ones just to see how well it's sold. The key to it is the is the seats up front that's you that's unique and the shower in the back. That's the two unique things that we want to see when we take it to shows. Do people really need that top up there? Do they really need the seating like like we thought they need? So travel four, sleep four, the small van, the smallest van where you can drive every day. Is there a market for that? We think so. We're we're really kind of trying to see really what's happening. That's really right. good that you have the seats that can be removed if you don't need them. Exactly. That's the key. We've done a lot it opens of it up a ton of storage that way. We've done a lot of it where it's like two people, and instead of putting those seats in the track on the floor, the track is expensive. We just take a bench and stick it sideways. And then you can just sit there, turn the seat around. You can now sit forward if you want by taking this back cushion and putting it up against the wall. So right. you can sit facing forward like a booth when you're eating, or you can sit sideways if you want and look out the window. Yeah. And so the bench makes more sense because you store things underneath. It's way yep. cheaper yep. for people that don't need the forward-facing seating when they're traveling. Yeah. Well, we like it. Thanks for, thanks for um, yeah, hey. showing us around. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks for all that. Uh, what do we got um, for people to get a hold of you? Where do you got to go? Sportsmobile what? Sportsmobile.com. There we go. Sportsmobile.com. You'll find it. Okay. Oh, I have a question for you. Another one. Another one. As if I haven't had any other questions. Um, since you've been since 1961, right? What kind of stuff did you guys do back in the 60s? The Volkswagen. We were the first ones to do the Volkswagen pop top, that clamshell you see on the Volkswagen. Yeah. That was done by Sportsmobile. The owner Charles Borsky, who's not with us anymore, he designed that. And what happened was, he ended up building them in El Paso, Texas, shipping them to Westphalia, Germany. The Germans stole it because they saw it and went, "We can do this." Yeah. They didn't have an international pad on it. And so then he went, okay, I'll do it in the United States. So now you, then he did it with the Ford chassis, the Dodge chassis, and the old Chevy chassis back in the 60s. That's cool. And he put a full pop top on it. So we offer the clamshell. So the, the old pop school pop. ones that I've seen with full pop pop, more than likely they're a, sport, they're a sportsmobile design. More than likely they're a sportsmobile design. We're the, we're the only ones that do it. And all the way up to probably 10 years ago, we're the only ones doing the pop tops. Nice. You know, we've looked at a lot of, out of different vans, but then there's the bigger companies. Like we've looked at the Winnebago Rebel. But what we're doing here is uh, Airstream. So not only do they have uh, Mercedes built Airstream, but they have a cool little camper that we're gonna look at. That's an REI design. I'm sorry, REI model, like their special edition. Here you go. This is the four by four one. You've got, it's good for two people. You've got 18 gallon fresh water tank, gray water tank, 16 gallons, and it has a black water. So there's an actual full bathroom in here. What do you think of that? So a sliding door screen instead of, and slide down. How about that? I'm sure it's magnetic. This has uh, that same step as that luxury one did. Out and goes back in. Yep. Yep. So there's a uh, there's a switch that uh, is somewhere. Doesn't really matter. Um, but here's an airstream. What's an airstream build look like? Well, obviously there's your front, very Mercedes. There's your bathroom. So you have your shower, toilet. Here's your galley. You got a little bit of a burner. You've got a cool seat down there. Actually, you know what this looks like? This looks extremely, very, very close um, 
to the Lux, uh, the luxury one that we saw. And so I'm assuming that these guys probably work together with that same company. Um, there's the fridge, you got TV by your um, back little bench over there, but very cool though. I mean, it's very cool. This is just the Airstream version of it. Here is a, obviously another version of Airstream, but here's a longer version. Here's your 170 extended. So we just came out of a 144. Let's look on the back real quick. I mean, I will say this, this market is the number one. There you go. It's your Interstate X, four by four. There you go. Now look at, now look at the difference that you have in seating in a thing, a size like this. You still got your full size shower. You, you got a bigger fridge and freezer combo, your bigger galley area. And, uh, and look at the, Look at the bench size you have here. So very cool. Um, Swords up top's kind of neat too. I kind of like that. Hope you can see it is dark in here, but it's kind of more of a like basket netting. You can kind of tuck things in there. I kind of like the red accents of it. All attached by L-Track on the side. L-Track on the side over here too. Um, so lighting on each seat so you can kind of see. It's four of those. Very cool. Very cool. Have that Airstream look to it on the inside. You got that silver. I like that. But here is an REI Special Edition trailer. We just watched something on this not that long ago, and now it's kind of actually cool seeing it in person. And here we go. Little camper, see that box right there? You know what that box is? I know what that box is. Do you know what that box is? Yeah. What is that box? Stuff. Stuff, you know what stuff? Airstream. No, there's no Airstream stuff in that box at all. That, has to do with the special edition of what this trailer is, and that's the REI thing. So everything in here is REI stuff that you can get from REI. So there's seats in here, there's cooking utensils in here, there's dishes, there's burners, there's all that kind of stuff that's used for camping, and all the gear supplied in this van, is, or van, I'm sorry, this is a trailer. And this trailer is, is an REI ordeal. Um, but really cool. So back door here, you got nice little cubbies there. Um, you've got, the way they do the little storage up above. I actually kind of like how they do that. The bench seating, this obviously, this goes into a bed. Yeah, a little more storage up that way. You got all these little cubby stuff. That's what I like about some of these kind of trailers like this, especially Airstream. Um, shower toilet right here. There's your fridge. There's your sink, or sink, sorry. There's your burners. Um, I believe they are gas burners in this one. There you go, you got two burners, got your gas burner, and you got all your little storage stuff, your bottles, there's your microwave and all the things. Really cool little trailer. What I actually like about Airstream is the way they open it up like that with the windows. And they do that on their on all our trailer type of camper stuff. So it's very nice, very cool, AC unit. Obviously this is a trailer, it's not a huge battery bank. There is actually option for battery in this, uh, but this one isn't uh, set with a huge battery. So like AC has to be, you have to be short power plugged and have like the AC unit and a few other things. But you still have your, your uh, Dometic fan. There it is, that's your fan. And that's very cool. So REI, and as you're coming outside, you have your, uh, uh, I believe it does a dual propane bottle uh, uh, in there and a little bit of storage, of course, on top of that. Um, but I do like, these are basically rock deflectors, uh, stainless steel deflectors to help so you don't damage your, uh, your, well, from rocks and kick it up from, from towing it. And there it is, your REI Special Edition. I really actually like the choice of the wheels. Even. That's some pretty cool wheels even for a trailer. Yeah. yeah, and there's all your stuff. So there's your dump. There's, so, I mean, it's, it's set up. Nice trailer. Um, nice, uh, nice sprinters as well. Nice fans. Check out Airstream. Well, that's a different kind of bed. Let's throw that in there. That's kind of nice. Has like the either stainless kind of look or maybe they're aluminum, whatever they are. Bed rises. Those are, that? that's a different kind of design. I've never seen that kind of stuff. Check out that, check out that box. It's like a dual box. I don't think I've ever seen one of them either. Designed to fit around so you get, get your handle still. That's pretty neat. How we doing? Good. Doing all right. Got the heater and the passenger seat. Microwave up there. Shower. There's sink over there, nice little workspace up here. Yeah, pretty cool, a little extender. Rear counter, kind of nice awning, pretty big awning. Too much all aluminum structures, no wood. 
So is that what that's built out? All aluminum? Is that, is that what you're saying? The all aluminum structures, is that what's in there? All aluminum? There's no wood? Okay. So there you go. That So we're seeing everything in there that's all aluminum uh, built out in there. So there's no wood being used. Um, and I, I'm actually seeing a little bit more and more on that because no matter what and, and the types of wood, they're still, I've seen people with butcher blocks that warp that were like real thick butcher blocks. I've seen them, seen them warp over time just because of, you know, it depends on where you take your van. So what do you think of the all aluminum type of build stuff um, instead of, you know, not using any wood or something like that? Alright guys, we've got Grit Overland, and apparently their uh, motto is no compromises. Now looking at here, we've got different packages. We've got all kinds of packages. It looks like they do Ford Transit um, and or Sprinter. Uh, all canvas built TIG wet, all aluminum framing, so that's good. All CNC'd, machine screws, no wood screws, no rattles. Once again, no compromise. So very cool. Um, they do have a couple options here. Let's walk through their vans here in just a second here. So we've got the Transit that they build in the all-wheel drive and the, and the Sprinter, which they build on the 4x4 uh, platform, but uh, more than likely the new Sprinter all-wheel drive platform is what they're gonna be starting next, since that's what you get. Now they are a custom outfitter, I believe, uh, besides their, their floor plans they have, um, but they also have, you know, good components are using that I can see, you know, the CA tuned bumpers, the Baja lights. Um, looking over the Sprinter here, you've got the, the Backwoods Adventure Mods bumpers, which are very, very cool. The Owl Vans boxes. So they're using very, very good components. Uh, the one up bike racks. That's the same bumper we have on ours. Um, and looks like they even have the options for the pop top ones if that's what you want. Need that extra bedroom. All right, let's get through uh, one of their transits here, um, which just so you know, is their bread and butter. They started more on the transit. They do, they do the Sprinter, but they started more transit side first, added the Sprinter later. So they were one of the earlier ones who really made the transit, not the only ones per se, but the one of the earlier ones who, who helped make the transit popular um, that it is today. So that's very cool. So immediately you've got two seats. These do um, collapse down. I do believe they very well may be DOT. They do have seat belts because they say it seats four, which means if it seats four, you can travel with four. Um, and I'm going to show you, this one doesn't have it here, but they also can sleep for, and I'm going to show you how they do that here in just a second. But we're going to walk through this one real quick. Obviously, right off, you got a, got the galley. Uh, you got a little extended table right here on the end. You got a, well, a table right there as well, which I'm assuming that can mount here on your floor mount. And that way you can sit in these two chairs and, um, and have a table because, well, that just makes sense. So in this particular one, we got a Dometic for your fridge. These are actually really awesome. And the cool thing about this is, let's say you have more than one rig. If this isn't like completely bolted down and it's just sitting or it has a way to just, it has a rack where you can remove it, yeah, you can take that and put it in your other rig. Maybe you got a Jeep and you do more um, crazy off-roading or overlanding that the vans just don't quite make it. So there is that. Now, I, I do want to notice this out. So they have a really cool Murphy bed system right here. Um, and you can see all the cushions here. It's a single Murphy, comes down over here. Obviously all the cushions go in here. You got the flares, give you a lot of little extra space there. Uh, windows on both sides, it looks like in the flares, I believe so. Uh, but when your bed is up, look at the countertop space you have right here. I mean, look at that, you, you come all the way over here. So you've got, hold on one second, see if you can get this. I mean, you've got all of this space. You could, you could put a chair here, you can sit here, you've got a working space. You have this over here off the side for additional table. Um, so this is just, this, this already makes very good use of, uh, of just uh, cooking, work, whatever you're doing inside the van, you have space. Uh, and I like that, so that's pretty cool. Now, on the one side, you've got uh, some hanging storage over there. Obviously, that's the factory storage with that. Up above, 
You have the infamous microwave that you see in a lot of these. There's all your control systems over here. And it does look like not just the little soft storage, so you got the, the hard kind of storage too. Now they do a lot of, all this stuff is aluminum uh, framing. Uh, we're talking, he says, no compromise. This is steady, this is sturdy. This is not gonna, this is not gonna rattle on you down the road. Um, you've got systems of both sides. So you've got, uh, I'm, I'm gonna guess, we'll go around the back here, but I'm guessing obviously you're gonna have electrical on one side, probably your water system on the other. Um, they do uh, obviously your AC and heating. And uh, I even like this too. You got your, you got your Molly type of uh, deals underneath the bed. So you lift your bed up, you always have storage, uh, extra storage that you can add there. So uh, really open up, really, um, I like the open feel. That's, that's really nice and of course, they do this also on the Sprinter, not just that. But we want to look at one of the other ones here real quick because they have a way where they sleep four, not just the seat four, sleep four. And I don't mean them putting a mat on the floor and sleeping. So let's go look at that. Okay, before we get to the uh, the sleep four thing that he uh, that we've got this gentleman right here, he's going to introduce himself here in just a second. And he's, but he's going to tell us about the power system here real quick of, of the Grit Overland builds. And then he's going to show us, I believe, right? You're going to show us the, the way you sleep for, because I know you can drive for, but you can sleep for. We're not talking about throwing a mat on the floor. It was a cool way of doing it <laughs> exactly. that you guys make. We made you guys comfortable. We want you to be able to sleep for adults in this van realistically. Yeah. Um, before we jump into the pop top uh, that we now manufacture and can install on a high roof Ford Transit, um, I want to talk a little bit about our electrical system in a really simple way because usability is the end goal for you guys and we made it super usable. So inside this box here, underneath our refrigerator, you've got a 13,000 BTU air conditioner. We don't mount it on the top for a reason because it's fighting the heat of the, the hot day. So you can run this AC with I, our electrical system for 11 hours off grid. I never even thought about that. The fact of if, if it is a hot day, and you have the sun beating on the outside of the AC that it affects it. Never even thought about that. Never even thought about that. Yeah, it's because ours is crazy. a rooftop mounted AC unit that we have in our van. So yeah, never even thought about that. And okay. they function yeah. well. An engineer sure, once sure. told me they were like, cold. "Don't think of it as pushing cold air into the van. Think of it as pulling hot air out of the van." Gotcha. So now with the uh, evaporator on the outside, underneath the van, it's not fighting the hot air of the day to shoot all that hot air out. Got it. Okay. So, I feel like I've been seeing that in a couple little builds where I'm seeing these these undermounted units like that. And I almost kind of feel like that's the way things are starting to go more so than the rooftop ones. Totally. And, and there's a sense. big reason behind that because you're going to show me later on the sleeping part. Exactly. Okay. Right. Exactly. Right. So you can run this air conditioner off of our power bank for 11 hours off grid unplugged. Gotcha. So the big deal with that's that is time. recharging it, right? Yeah. A lot of people can make an electrical system that you can run an AC for 11 hours off grid but how fast can you recharge it and still use the air conditioner? So what we've done is we've installed a second alternator that actually has the power to recharge our battery bank in about 60 minutes, all while still running that air conditioner. So you can do that over and over and over until you get down to a quarter tank of gas. So we figure that's about seven days. Wow, okay. And that's, so an hour, how, now how much is it idling up to charge? So it'll idle at 1800 RPMs. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's not so bad. Yeah. No, it's and, not. Does that, that mean it's quiet. running off a second alternator? Yep. When it's doing that? Yep. So as you drive as well, it's charging as you drive as well. Exactly. So if you're not stationary for days on end, you don't even need that feature. Exactly. You know. Yeah, while you're driving, it'll push somewhere between six and 9,000 watts into your battery bank. Okay. Wow. Um, do, you, do you do charging? Do you do solar or anything like that? So this van is a 51 volt electrical system. So solar tech isn't quite there yet it's getting close okay so we don't do solar on the 51 volt system however yeah. if you're a person who's like you know what i don't need an ac we also do a 12 volt electrical system that's super robust and we put solar panels on top of that because it's good tech you said 51 volt system mm -hmm. so yeah. the highest number i've ever heard before is 48 volt system so yeah. is that similar to that just just a little higher yeah it allows us to overcharge the battery bank okay and fill it up Okay, so you get more full charges out of it. So that way you're driving, you're not getting a 95% charge, you're probably getting 100% charge. Exactly, it gives you a little bit more usable battery bank. That's interesting. That's the first I've actually ever heard of the, of the 51 volt systems. Yeah, we're excited so, about uh, it. Do you have different levels of the battery capacity, what someone might want to carry? So we do have the option of doing that, but realistically where we're at is it's 10,200 watt hours and the usability of that with the charging speed 
it really is we've hit that sweet spot in the middle okay so that's uh that's a pretty good size battery bank because especially if you're running an ac unit for 11 hours exactly without even knowing what whatever your kilowatts or amp hours or whatever it is you already know that's a big battery system <laughs> right okay. if for most people they're thinking kind of in the 12 volt arena mm -hmm. because that's kind of the standard for van life especially for the diy market it would be kind of compared with 800 amp hours if you're in the 12 volt arena i got you that said with a 12 volt system it would take you like four to five hours to charge that battery bank with your standard alternator charging so we can that's do crazy. that in about 60 minutes by going to that 50 that's volts. that's crazy and that's where tech tech is going to right there i yeah. mean bigger battery banks charging faster than the smaller old ones and, in a sense and realistically all that tech and all the data sounds awesome it's really neat but at the end of the day it's about you hanging out in a van that's ac filled with maybe your dogs here with the vents blowing on them if you can't nice. take them into a hike in a national park and they're staying nice and cool very cool it's the end use right right now um inverter wise i mean I'm assuming you obviously got to have the inverter in this and you have yeah we run a 3000 watt inverter okay that's a good um, size too makes it totally totally usable you can run coffee makers induction cooktop microwave all of that stuff charging e-bikes now a question on, on now on your AC unit because I don't know anything about these things yeah does it require the inverter to be on to run the AC unit no so that's a game changer we I like. use a 48 volt air conditioner and the reason we do that is so here's going backward a little bit with that. Say you're using a rooftop 110 AC. Puts out a ton of cold air, right? Yeah. But the problem is if you have to run it through the inverter, the inverter heats up, it's blowing warm air into your fan, into your van, yeah. and now it's kind of defeating the purpose. And also you're losing energy just by inverting. Exactly, that, that, and just having the inverter on without anything running off of it, you're also draining your battery just by exactly. that. Exactly, so, so by keeping that voltage the same from the alternator to the batteries to the AC unit, you're saving energy, which equals more runtime, which equals nice. better use at the end of the day. So the only reason you need your inverter on is to run your microwave or anything you have plugged into an AC outlet. Exactly. That's awesome. I love the heck out of that. That's actually, I don't even know, unless someone has not told me that part, that's the first one I ran into that runs their AC unit off of their Same. battery bank straight without the inverter. <laughs> Same, that I haven't found awesome. anyone yet. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, heater system, how about that? So we're, we're talking about Timberline AC. Timberline heater, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we only install a Timberline heater. Um, we went through, we've been doing this for four years. We've been building vans. What, um, what kind of heaters are those? What do they do? They, they, they run off gas? Are they gas so operated? Or it is electric? gas operated. Okay. It has a combustion um, engine underneath the van. Okay. okay. And that heats coolant, which then passes through heat exchangers to heat air and or water. Okay. So that's, so same thing. I've seen that a lot. The heater is also uh, dual purpose to give you hot water as well. Exactly. Kind of like an on-demand almost kind of water. Exactly. Okay. Very awesome. I like those. Those, those uh, you were using those systems for a while then? Yeah, the yeah, okay. we've got, uh, for the last two years, we've been putting those out. The reason we use them is one, their customer service is amazing. They'll get, those guys take great care of everybody. Okay. Um, from the DIY single installer to someone who's putting in 200 of them. Um, okay. And then the second thing is, which is even more important for the end user is, we just never have problems with them. There you go. They're just super reliable. I, I have heard of some, uh, some of the name brand ones out there as well, where it requires, you know, your yearly maintenance on them. Sometimes it's not the easiest maintenance, but you got to really know what you're doing. Yeah. Now, uh, whether someone watching this video is going to care about that because they're like, we don't care. We're just going to drop it off at a shop and let them handle it. Right. When it comes to that system, maintenance pretty low on those, I take it. Is, is there an upkeep you have to do to keep that running efficient or is it pretty bulletproof as it is? Yeah. So to get super nerdy on you for a second, All right. this is one of the huge reasons we install this heater and why it just doesn't have a bunch of issues is <clears throat> the Timberline heater at the end and the beginning of every single cycling on and off, it actually has what I call an afterburner. So it will go into a high heat burn cycle and burn out any carbon that was created by the combustion of gasoline or diesel. In, in this case, we're in a Ford Transit, it's gasoline. Right. In the Sprinter, diesel. Diesel, right. Um, we use the same heater. Okay. But because it does that, it's actually, they call it maintenance free. So we have heaters that have been on, on the road for two years, no issues, not nice. even one. Nice. So it's more expensive than your standard air heater like a Webasto or Eversbacher in those. But yeah. honestly, we don't install anything else because it's been so good. Gotcha. You know, uh, when, when a product costs a little bit more than the competition, <laughs> yeah. a lot of times there's a reason for it. Yeah. Now, usually cheap things aren't good and good things don't tend to be cheap. 
True statement. On majority of stuff yeah. of the world. I'm not saying that's 100% accurate, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah, exactly. That's one of the things that we, like the DNA of our company is all about keeping our owners more days on the road. No days in the shop is the goal. There you um, go. And really having them have a great user experience out on the road in the van. And if anything that you have told me so far, even just about this electrical down here, your AC unit, your heater, your motto on the front of no compromise basically fits that bill perfectly. Try to do our best to make That's you right. guys' life better. All right, you wanna go show me how they sleep four people? Cool, let's check out let's, this pop top. Let's go do it. All right, now we've got a way that we're sleeping multiple, but I, let's explain and talk to him a little bit about what the initial two will probably be sleeping on. And that's the bed that we have sitting over here. You guys basically kind of have a Murphy style bed. Yeah. Um, goes to one side, but like I talked about earlier, it gives you massive countertop space um, and a work, a basically a workbench, a table to work with. And now the other one we were in, they had the backside down. Now you have them both up so you can just see the amount of garage space you actually have that you can you can put a full-size motorcycle in here if you wanted to. You absolutely can. Yeah, yeah. you can roll it right We've in We've actually here. had them in here. I mean, that, that was one of the things that I really liked about the van we had purchased because we liked the idea of having the ability to move the bed to have the storage space. Not everybody does that. A lot of them have permanent beds. Yeah. You have an awesome garage, but you're structure-wise. I used it when we moved, and my daughter needed help moving <laughs> big furniture, and we just, yeah, we just put, like, <laughs> yes. a big dresser in here, a big tall shelf in here. You know, it, was, it was great. Exactly. So, um, Basically, it's simple, right? You got one at straps, straps over there, one at straps here, lays down, mattresses lay out. So I'm doing that with one hand, you guys. I want you to see that. A lot of thought That's went into this engineering-wise to make it that simple yeah. and to make it able to span that whole, dir whole uh, distance without any legs or anything in your gear garage so you keep all your usable space. I do have a, I do have a question on two things. Since we didn't, we didn't touch it over there and I was just walking around doing a talk as well, you have that extra storage on the bottom of here. Can you get it on that side too? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. You can put molly plates under both bed leaves and then, of course, on the backs of the wheel well boxes as well. So if all of your stuff like, hey, we need stakes for our awning or we want to keep our water fill hose in there, everything has a place that lives in the van. So when you're ready to go somewhere, all you do is go get groceries and take nice. off. And I also know, so you've got, obviously you got the soft storage on this side kind of thing, mm -hmm. nice and simple, throw some things in there, but then you have your, uh, your storage boxes and stuff yeah, up here. Sure. Can you get those on this, on the other side over here instead of the soft ones? Yeah, so we don't do hard cabinets on this side um, that we actually manufacture. Well, not in the bedside per se, but I'm, re I'm referring like instead of these, instead of these right here, could you go the hard storage ones so not that, that we manufacture sense. but yes you can if somebody manufactures those you can absolutely put them oh up i there. see what you're saying yep. so what we've done is we actually have aluminum infrastructure that runs the whole length of the van okay. so all that you have to do is drill and tap that and you can bolt anything into it i got you so we've okay. put the structure behind the panels and the reason we did that is l track is cool but yep. what we found two years ago is that l track connected to metal connected to sunshine brings heat inside the van and uh, so we got rid of the l track so you now have an insulation break but you still have really robust aluminum tube structure yeah. behind the panels to be able to mount through the panels gotcha well very cool so you basically built a van that you can still grow with exactly and you can still customize you can still do things on your own to a, to a, to a point if it's something that you didn't offer originally they have the ability to expand on it exactly we do cool. you know overhead bags here so if somebody w is okay with having bags over the top of their sleeping space okay then that can so, easily be so you mounted. can do that okay yeah that's cool that's very cool uh i will say and i, and I tell people because i'm six two and yes i fit in vans if i was a whole lot taller probably wouldn't fit in them so much yeah the transit's the taller one we have the sprinter i'm just at the top yeah but it works yeah exactly i just barely fit in the bed yeah. Um, and I will say, if you like the, the hard storage on one side is great. The soft storage is what I like about it because it doesn't hurt as bad when you hit your head. True. And that so is actually why we do a soft cabinet on one <laughs> side because people tend to put their head underneath it. So yep. until they get used to it, they bonk a few times right. and it That's doesn't cool. cut them. <laughs> now, um, I guess um, for, the, um, for the ones who like to carry around tape measures everywhere they go, <laughs> yes. what kind of space do we have from the floor to here? So 37 and a half inches underneath the uh, bed here. So that's good for people with the mountain bikes and the slides and all that kind of you stuff. You can fit an XL mountain bike underneath this bed with the front wheel off. 
gotcha. and that's exactly why we designed it and that's, that way. Okay, you got yeah. that perfect height for that. Now, um, you do have flares, yep. looks like. What's Six this? foot seven side to side. Oh, nice. And then the bed mattress is 60 inches wide, so okay. it's an RV queen. Got it, okay. Yep. Yeah. And that's really only like what an inch or two difference from an actual like home queen, like a queen yeah. size that you would get yeah. a, in a house. Yep, okay. exactly. Yeah, exactly. And it's just the length is a little bit shorter than an actual queen in your Got home. Got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. But now what we want to know about is how do you sleep four? Yeah. So it's hard to be in a van with just two people because everybody wants to go along and have, you know, downhill mountain biking or skiing or climbing or whatever that activity is. Yep. Um, and there wasn't that we felt a super great option for a family, you know, with a couple kids or a group of four people that actually slept the second two people comfortable. Everybody makes a pretty decent bed in the back, but then how do you sleep two more adults in this? So the pop tops that we saw on the market were like, yeah, they're a nice, uh, well-built unit. We've installed okay. a lot of them, Yep. but the mattress would be narrow or short and you would be limited on how much weight you could put up there significantly. So we went back to the drawing board and we said, you know what, for the high roof uh, Ford Transit, let's make the ultimate pop top. So we made a mattress that's 53 and a half inches wide. You can actually sleep two adults up there. It's six foot six sleeping space. So you're not that much of a different size than the bed that you have down here. Exactly. Okay. We've added lights, charging ports for cell phones. That's nice. The max fan is in there so you can still pull hot air or cool air up that's into cool. the pop top. And then what I feel is well, a really cool option on that is we also have brought power up there so you can extend it into the winter months with an electric blanket. And it's just right. way more usable of a pop top with a nice thick mattress that's actually comfortable. All right. Shall we take a look at this? Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to see if I can do this with just one hand and a microphone. Challenge accepted. <laughs> so ladder, this is a telescoping that collapses down ladder so you've got that to get up in it and to be honest it's not that bad to move around it if you had to and then you've got a bed so as you can see there is a, actually a lot of space in this mattress and you've got your lights with your charging ports designed to be open in the hard rain you know winter months like we've built this thing robust like the rest of our build um, and then of course, if you look at the outside of the van, you can see that we've actually made a rack that goes all the way around it. So you can mount your awning, your Baja lights for yeah, off-road, yeah, your yeah. scene lights for the back, we'll take and a it's look at super that lightweight as well. Awesome, awesome. Now look, obviously you got windows up here, so you got ventilation side to side up here. I do love that touch right there. The fact that you have a fan up here. Yeah, that, and one of the things really that cool. isn't obvious in these builds, and the reason we do this, and another one of the reasons we made our own pop top is because nobody was putting it so that we could put the fan in the space where it drops over the opening. So when this pop top is closed, the fan drops onto the opening, and oh. right below where the ladder is, you move the ladder, and our indoor shower is right there. So now you're pulling steam out of the van, whether the pop top is up or down. Okay, there's two things you said that I never even thought about. Well, that fan is utilized, closed or open. Exactly. And I never, what is it even thinking about that that fits in this hole? And you said something about a shower that we haven't even talked about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That I didn't know about. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Well, that's awesome. It's a bed. It's got your electrical. It's got your, uh, it's got your ventilation. You can put a heated blanket if it's a little chilly. If it's not, then you're good to go. Um, yeah, I like it. That's a, that's really cool. It looks like you got the handles up there, right? Is that the pull it shut? Yep, I'm assuming. Pull it shut, and then it latches down on the front. Latches right there, and on the other side too, right? Yep. Right there. Oh, let's not lean on the fence. <laughs> All right, cool. You got to show me the shower. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. Now, initially, when I was doing the walkthrough in the other van without the pop top one, I didn't realize that there's a way. Basically, you have a bathroom in here. You have a shower. Yes. Uh, you have a bathroom uh, to a point or toilet, whatever it is. Where are they? So, cassette toilet compartment. You can fit a Dometic uh, cassette toilet in there. Okay, perfect. Uh, or a, a collapsible, whatever fits your preference. Yep. Um, the biggest thing, though, that we found is a lot of the industry, people who own vans or RVs with a dedicated shower in them, they just end up being storage. 
So our thought process was, well, what if you can have the best of both worlds? Have a shower, but it only takes up four inches of space. Why not? So Did you just say four inches of space? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Can I get the view from this side, baby? Here we go. So this is your shower pan. It's all welded aluminum frame, super sturdy. And then you've got your mixing valve, pull out shower and head. There's your shower head. And then the curtain, <laughs> super clean wise. You take your shower curtain, it's hydrophobic material, antimicrobial. You got clear plastic on top so I can make faces at my wife. When I'm taking a shower, we'll edit that Slide part Slide into these little L-Track singles. Oh, I didn't know they made those kind of things. That's pretty cool, too. And once again, you're right below, like you said, that max fan. Um, so you got perfect ventilation, keep the moisture out of the van. And... I know it's aluminum down there, but is there still kind of a, some kind of a magnetic track that it does, or is it just... Ah, look at that. So just tuck these little loops over those yo-yos. So... And now... Yeah. You have a shower, and it actually stays off of you. Exactly. It does And your shower uh, head just pulls through this little access that has a flap over it, so you don't get a bunch of water outside of it. Yep. Yeah. It works honestly amazing. Do you have a place to hang your shower head? We actually do pockets on the inside. So what we initially did is we put a carabiner on it and we were like, hey, let's just hang this up here. Yep. Well, the reality of it is you're in a van with 21 gallons of fresh water. And if you hang it up and run it, yeah, your it... water will be gone in seven minutes. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> we're running at three down, gallons yeah, a minute, exactly. Right. So usually what we do is we'll put it into the pocket along with soap and stuff, or you can put a hook on it and just hang it from one of these. But you have a place here. to just stab it. You have a place to basically store it in a sense. That's, that's exactly. Kind of okay, yeah, exactly. Perfect. 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 So that's I have cool. a lot of people look at this and they go, man, how am I going to close that up? And one of the things that I like about our designers that build this stuff in house And you've got your curtain all closed up inside. Nice. Just pull the top up and it goes Exactly. And it's just gratifying to hear the magnets do their thing. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're not lying, actually. It's true. You're not lying at all. So you've got, obviously, you can see here, smaller shower pan, so it has a small footprint. Yep. But nice and wide top, so even somebody with big, broad shoulders has lots right. of elbow room well, to that, move And that's where you need it. I mean, that's yeah. why you, you see sleeping bags shaped like a mummy like they are, because exactly. they're wider up top than they are down below. That's where you need the space. So, yeah. Exactly. That makes sense. And then when you're done Perfect. with it, of course, like we talked about, it's not taking up a huge footprint in your van. The curtain folds back up, goes into the shower pan, folds away into a four inch space. Cool. And then it basically just goes back the opposite way you took it out. There it is. I like that. That's very cool. I love seeing some innovation on uh, hidden showers, uh, stowaway showers, or whatever you want to call them. Um, but you're right. Most people I know typically, yes, they like the ability to have the shower is very nice. But even with us, we've used ours, but there's many trips we haven't even touched it. So basically, if you have a permanent shower station, you always have that wasted space. And you're right, it eventually just becomes some uh, store all place. And then every time you want to take a shower, you got to remove all that crap out of it. Where is uh, that? You saw and, me put it away. It took and now two you, minutes. Right. And now you have an open space, which is why I continued to talk while you did it, because I was just like, OK, how easy is that? Yeah. That easy. You yeah. saw it, everybody. Yeah, uh, and then once uh, again, you have that wide space. When I'm sitting in the front seat flipped around and I still have perfect view outside of uh, uh, him standing in my way. <laughs> no, but but yeah, but you like still have wife. the full. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Don't put that part in. Uh, we'll, we'll edit that one out <laughs> as he saw me wink. Um, but very cool. And I mean, obviously we're in a transit. I was told you started with, this company started with transits over the Sprinter. So it's like you helped market the transits uh, one of the earlier ones that did, that yeah, made the transits on the popular side. Yeah, one of the things that really we've leaned into is we've got a really great relationship with Ford. Um, we do 
build the sprinter as well, like you said. We do mostly Fords. We'll do 60 this year and then somewhere around 100 next year. But everything we do plug and play with the OEM stuff from Ford. And so they've actually um, teamed up with us and the normal Ford Transit warranty is 60,000 miles bumper to bumper. But because they like what we do, they actually increase that warranty to a 100,000 mile bumper to bumper warranty on any grit van. That? That's always a plus. So it's nice to see like that they're seeing the value that we've worked really hard to make a high quality product that they feel is valid enough to go, okay, that deserves a good warranty. Very cool, I like that. And of course, if you guys know, they, obviously they do build on the Sprinter and I'm just gonna show out there, there. There you go, there's a Sprinter there with the pop top on it as well. And basically floor plan wise, it's the same kind of floor plan? Same exact floor plan, the only yeah. difference is the, the measurements, measurements are slightly, are slightly different. different. Yep. Uh, yep. I think the Ford, you got a little taller. Yep. Uh, is it a little wider too? It is, three okay. inches. There's, okay, so you got a little, 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 so someone who's taller than myself, probably should go with the transit size if you need the space. Yeah. Unless you like bumping your head or don't want to fit in the bed. There you go. Either way, right? You always, you always got the roof. Exactly. I can sleep up there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, very cool. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Uh, absolutely appreciate it. And where uh, do they go for a Grit Overland van? Yeah, you guys Four can questions. find us at gritoverland.com or you can check out our YouTube channel, Grit Overland, or on Instagram, at Grit Overland as well. Um, we do have some DIY products that we've launched this year, but our biggest thing is we're an RV manufacturer and we build a high quality van. Come check us out. And, uh, and they do it with no compromise. That's it right there. Bingo. <laughs> this is actually quite a seating area. I've actually never seen one unless it was a passenger van itself. So I had those many seats here. The seat belts. A little bit of reclined seats. Slide the window over there and the wood. So what I was also told, so they're bed slides, and it actually, here you go, you can actually slide to where you're a couple of feet outside, so if you wanted to, you can literally lean back in case of the stars at night. That's actually a really cool touch. You got a big garage. All right, we got your hot water in right there. You've got, looks like some more cubby type of storage up in there. That's actually a table. So uh, there's behind the one seat, you got a couple benches. We'll look at that in a second. That table slides out. So you got like a big dinner table and people can sit across. Look at all the extra, man, that goes back pretty far. You got a huge Dometic um, uh, dual fridge freezer kind of combo deal. Um, that's, that's large. So it kind of gives you an idea how big this storage is back here. You can almost put three of those back here. Bed folds up, so it actually kind of folds up too. So there's some uh, drop-in countertop stuff out there, and uh, and if I'm not mistaken, this side once you've rolled it in, that can roll up, and then you can recline that way too. Uh, very cool. Uh, I like I like that idea. So you sleep this way, but this is a 170, maybe a 170 even extended, um, not a 144. That would be a little bit more harder to do. But this woodwork, I want you to see this a little bit closer. If they do all this. But look up here. Can you see that picture? You may not be able to pick it up on camera that much, but there is a design in there. So what happens, they turn light and you don't see the lights. The lights actually shine up onto that ceiling where you see that kind of Native American looking design right there. And it just gives you a lovely ambient glow throughout the entire van. That's a nice touch. I like that a lot. It's very cool, but yeah, there's that bed, how it slides out a little bit like that. Um, it's very nice, and let's kind of see, can we, can, we, can we show you the bench a little bit? No, here we go. So, um, there's your double bench seat, you got some storage up underneath, you've got your sink right here. Um, and you're thinking, not much of a galley here, right? There's not much you can do with this, but there is, because this can be turned into, you fold the bed up, and you got a drop-in counter that you can put right in there. Um, and not to mention, there's that table right here. See right here that you saw from the back? That whole thing's gonna slide right out here and you got a big table that you can sit across and probably comfortably seat four people for dinner at a table. So oh, very nice, very cool. Um, maybe you can see more of that pattern in there, I don't know. Got your max fan kind of in there, gives it enough to where you can still get through. 
Thanks, Karen, uh, for showing us a little bit around the van. Uh, we are with Spark, is that correct? That's right. Okay, and, but you're gonna show us now, we did, we did kind of a little walk around and kind of uh, looked a little bit about it, but you're gonna show us how this bed system works. So this is a little bit different, it's a little bit more unique than I've seen here. Perfect. So uh, what do we got here, show us the bed. Okay, so the bed, the, the, the obviously one of the big differences in our van is like the structure here, like the beam and slat structure. Yeah, so this isn't just for aesthetic look. There's a there's a no. structural ability to or, or purpose behind this whole build, right? Yes, it's like this is our design aesthetic. We're committed to maintaining it no matter what the functionality is yep. in the van, but it creates the platform for us to build everything else onto. So like our bed platform is jointed into the slats, you can see there, also supported along the sides. So everything interlocks in the van, and it creates a really strong structure for this platform. And it's also supported by additional uh, maple legs that we milled. So this, the platform itself is now really part of the structure of the van because it's tied into all this. And gotcha. it allows us to build um, a connection between the bed and the platform that slides. It'll, it won't move up and down, it won't move sideways, but it'll move forward and back, and it's very stout. So, we can push it out right now. It's out the back of the van about 18 inches so we can sleep under the stars. And then it articulates both ways so I can recline it. And I can pick the level of you know, incline by which slats I'm putting it in. Well, that's really cool. So we're trying to create everything simple, but everything is contributing to the functionality also even though it might not seem it when you first look at it no you're right it, it really does hide the you're thinking oh what i need design and there really is more Wait. more form and function to this than design per se yeah, and we're just getting started on how we integrate elements for use cases like we had somebody thinking about a laptop but they want to stand up so we're like oh well let's build a shelf that goes right into here and you can do this and then you need to be able to stow it away so it disappears and you're left with this aesthetic you know after that one use case is not there anymore. And then we can do it vertically, and that's what you were just kind of describing. Um, and then we have drop-in panels, so this becomes our counter. So we have a 70 by 27 inch counter space, which is more counter space than any van, but like last night we- That is pretty big counter space. Yeah, and we prepped in here for a big feast last night. I spent an hour last night building skewers and, and getting everything ready in here because I have lights, it's the right height, and it's comfortable, and outside my back would be killing me by the time I was done with that. So we can have a, yeah. we like to entertain. Yeah. So this is basically an entertaining van, and lounging van, adventure van. It's, so it's very different kind of purpose for this one than most. Well, I mean, and, and typically if you don't have space inside your van to prep, you're prepping everything outside, and that can be determined how well that is on the weather. Absolutely. You're either gonna be in the rain, it could be super hot, it could be super cold, or whatever the case may be. Yeah. Uh, we're in here, you're in the comfort of your own, your van, basically. Yeah, yes, yes, exactly. Um, and so then the bed um, also articulates and slides back in. So for um, most of the time, the bed is like this. And we have little actuators that put wheels in and out that slide along the back. So when I do that, I've got now I've huh. got the reclining inside, so I can recline outside, I can recline inside, and then we have pins that lock it into place when we're driving. Um, but this is really great for hanging out, because two people can be up here, two or three people can be here. We do it all the time, we meet people for these events, we end up hanging out later in the evening, we're in here, so we wanted a comfortable place for four or five people to actually hang out and, and build community. So basically what you're saying is yesterday when we ran into some rain, we needed to be at your booth so we had plenty of space to hang out in the van. We did and we had a massive feast last night. We did a <laughs> ton of, of yakitori skewers and we had a big party here last night and it went till, I'm sure people are mad at us, went till like two in the morning. It was awesome. Yeah, the funny thing is, is I think I was up to one in the morning myself. Perfect, perfect, yeah. <laughs> perfect. Um, and then for sleeping, it's a full queen size bed. I'll retract the wheels back in, and flat, and then push it to the back door. And then it's cantilevered off of here, so it has support already, but for some additional support, you take the same things, put it in there, and now you have your bed, your queen size bed. Then this converts awesome. to a bed platform. And okay, so you have the girls here. We can sleep five people. Wow, that's pretty cool. And that's, that's five people without having a pop up ordeal like you see on yeah, some the only constraint is one of them has to be five two or less and one of them has to be ah, five nine or less i got right you now. i got you okay so uh maybe we'll compromise the height but most kids per se you know it could be that that family adventure van where everybody has a spot we built it as a family van you know 
five, five people with seat belts, four or five people being able to eat at the same table, four or five people being able to lounge and, and be inside, and then outside, of course, we have our outside set up. Awesome. Very cool. Awesome. Thank you so much. This is, this is pretty cool. Now, uh, I guess real quick, since I talked about the slide out, there's a slide out table that comes out here. I guess we might as well get a visual. I got you here, right? Oh, yeah. So we saw it from the from the back side. We already knew what it was because we were told there was a table there. But let's see it in action. Look at that. Yeah, so it's a it's a huge table for a van, but honestly, it's a small table for an actual table for four people. So when this is up, that prep counter, now it really opens things up because we can put our water and our wine and rice bowl or whatever here and here, and now you can have dinner in here. Nice. You know, and be pulling something because otherwise our kids not stuff over. <laughs> You know. Don't tell y'all. Yes, exactly. Uh, well, that that's big. There's there's not many um, that you can as quickly convert to a, a very comfortable four person dining table. Yeah, yeah, and, and that was and seating. We wanted to be able to do stuff quick. We came from truck camping when my job was an hour and a half setup, hour and a half takedown every time we stopped anywhere. And so I'm committed yep. to making my life easier. We started that way too. It was packing the trunk of a car, yep. eventually putting a carrier on top so we can carry more things, just yep. so we can fit a couple of kids in the back seats. Yeah. Uh, it's where tents up if it's bad weather. Oh, well, we got a lot of drying stuff out to do once, once we get home. And, yeah. and uh, the, the van life thing makes it definitely uh, a lot less compromised. It has um, dramatically changed the, the well, what is, uh, it has dramatically changed how often are outside. We yeah. we go anytime quickly for a night or four nights. It has completely changed how we get outside for the better. Yeah. And you actually want to do it. Yes. And, and, and not just a certain time of year, like, yeah, I, I, I want to do it, but we got to go this time of year because otherwise it, it won't be that great. Well, with something like this, it's, I, I, I'm assuming this is kind of a four season ish type of, type of vehicle. Then, right? Absolutely. I mean, we live in Portland, Oregon, so our climate is pretty mild, but we, we have more rain than like really harsh weather. Oh, but, for sure. So we go in the pouring down rain and find a rainforest where there's some cover and hang out in the van a little bit out, put yeah. the awning up, cook, and it's, it's perfect. Oh, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Now, um, I'm sure someone's gonna wanna, uh, from the scene, how cool this is um, and all the little details in here, well, where can they find you? Um, well, we're, we're Spark is our company and spark-adventures.com is our, our um, website and then our Instagram is spark underscore adventures underscore PDX and you can find us both those places. Thank you so much. Appreciate you. All right. Thank you. There's a cool little slide out door or slide out drawer for the back of your garage. Kind of a middle thing. So you have like something to strap things to or like molly strap or molly panel type of thing. That's a neat idea. I haven't seen that yet. You usually get the big open. Uh, maybe there's a back panel or something, but I've never seen it where you have one in, in the middle or you'll have two separate ones. Yeah. So that's a neat idea how they did that. And of course, it's always good. We might be thinking about doing some kind of Molly type of panel like that. It is kind of a neat idea uh, for hanging all different types. Of and you don't have to have Molly gear to do it. I mean, they just have little Velcro straps or little hooks or something you can use. You know, look at the skateboard. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a Molly strap in order to fit. <laughs> The thing, uh, very cool idea having the thing in the middle like that to, to give it all kinds of different features because you got all kinds of space on both sides. You have ways to hang things, strap stuff down. It's a it's a really neat idea. I like that a lot. Yeah, we did this for uh, 303 Skateboards, their company over in Denver. They have a bunch of skateboard shops, and so they have a whole bunch of custom. They wanted to be able to access their stuff without throwing a whole bunch of stuff on top of each other. Right, you got to move something to get to something. Yep, it. yep. Um, there's a bunch of minor details in here that are super uh, great, like the uh, using the decks and the lighting over here. Uh, they wanted us to use incorporate some themes and things that would kind of make sense for their company and get their. It's very cool. I mean, there you go. There's some use of space you don't see up on the top of the door even. Right. Just yeah. a little bit of cubby. Totally use that area. You don't have to just wall that off. The lighting they got, the lighting strips. I like. I like that. That's really neat. Indirect lighting is so much more, especially at night, so much cozier. More more um, pleasant, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Exactly. So, you got we're, it. We're all designers by trade at this company. And just um, this just this right here, look at that. Mm -hmm. 
and boom, it's really the you hooked your bag. Details that make our builds what they are. Yeah, sure. that's um, very neat. I like that. We're all designers here. We're about five minutes up the road here. Oh, are you really? Nice. So we're local. Okay. Um, we do all sorts of work, uh, big or small. We also do servicing on if you got something that you're working with. And okay. If you want to do a little upgrade. Then we very neat. Help you out with that. But we do big and small for sure. Uh, definitely check out our website. Uh, we even do uh, builds for like drop in builds for Supers and stuff like that. Oh, so you're not um, just vans, you deal with all vans. kinds of stuff. Yeah, well, yeah, all right, uh, for this kind of stuff, you're um, where do they got to find you? Where, where's the best way to, to look for you? www.venturehouse.com. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, we, there we go. Yeah, yeah. There we go. You want to see the innovation? You want to check out a little bit more? I'm assuming you got some things on your website to kind of oh, show yeah, a little absolutely. over time. Yeah, we got right website just was updated. We have all sorts of information up there. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. So uh, vendorhouse.com. Yeah. That's a, uh, I'll show, I'll show the name, right the spelling. There it is. Yeah. 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 Yep. There you go. Perfect. <laughs> Thanks guys. Yeah. Thank Appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming by. Yeah. No problem. Van Deming, let's get the hat. Come on. Boom. What's Vandemic? Uh, what's Vandemic mostly do on their stuff? Is it is it like a build out ProMasters mostly? Okay. Um, we've done some other builds, but specialize in ProMasters. ProMasters, alrighty. Yeah, so a little bit different. We sort of specialize in doing a little tiny little mobile, so less of the adventure van maybe, and more of the like, how can I get the coziest, tiniest home that I can bring it? Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, very cool. Let's uh, well, let's take a look over around the backside. So we got a ProMaster here, so specializing ProMasters. That's not as common, which actually what makes it really cool because that was one of the earlier vans we thought about getting a long time ago was a ProMaster because I don't know, just because of the simplicity of the van. Yeah, well, and they're an easier price point to get into. That, that was another reason. There was that. Yeah, and they're actually a little wider inside, and even that tiniest bit more of space. It's amazing, isn't it? Yeah, you get an inch or two somewhere, it's like, it's, it's a mile almost. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, yeah, we, we actually really enjoy working with the ProMasters and clients. Oh, cool. Them, so. Well, all right, we'll kind of take a, take a look here. Um, it is a, just like uh, I was told here, it is a very cozy looking van. Here's your garage area, and it does actually kind of have a pass through, it goes all the way through. That's a pretty wide area. You get an idea. I mean, I mean, there's a there's a one wheel. There's a there's a ton of space in there. Uh, obviously, one side you've you've got electrical. You've got water on the other side, and they even have a, a deal on here to show you how much water you have, just by visual. That's kind of neat. Obviously, you got your electrical on one side. Here's your bed, and your bed even has little cozy little things in there. You've got your overhead. You've got your. I really like the the roof. I like the the wood slats. That's kind of a cool touch. And over there, there you got your control stuff, some USB, some plugs, all that stuff on that side of that wall. Here's your galley over here, as you can see, you know, spice rack, things of that sort on that side. I think the people just moved from over there. So let's let's go around the side door and uh, and take a closer look at that. There we go. There's your uh, there's your uh, gas burners. You got an extension here uh, for your counter. You got your swivel seats. Let's go back to a little bit more of a wide view. There you go, you got your swivel seats. You've got a table that swims around there. You got your bench seat with your storage. Down below, fridge, more space, really nice. Looks like maybe even a pantry right there. It is a very cozy, this is a very nice big sink too. A nice sink. You know, they're, they're mentioning, uh, you know, they want this to be the cozy, the, the home. I know that's what a lot of people do with their vans is, you know, they, a lot of people live in it. This is their home. They make it to where it's comfortable for them. But just like the, the view in here, I feel like I'm more in a tiny home than I am a van. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, that's, that's a comfort thing. Um, and uh, I think they did a really good job. They got uh, plenty of little storage, plenty of little uh, space around here. Um, it's ProMaster. Don't, that you, don't, you don't see as much of those as you do the transits and the sprinters. Their front wheel drive, um, I actually think more efficient. And if you do have a two wheel drive van, I almost think they're even better getting around in, in better, worse weather. They have a lower flow point. Their roof's not as high. I mean, you got advantages all the way around on a ProMaster uh, compared to the other ones and still have this space inside. So very cool. Where do we find uh, Vandemic here? Hey there, we are local in Denver, Colorado.
Denver, Colorado. Yeah. Uh, where do they find you if they need to learn more information about you guys? So if you look up on any of the social media platforms, Van Demick Camper Vans, uh, double the C up in the middle, you can find us there. Reach Instagram's the easiest one. I'm always on that, so I can respond to people that Got way. Got it. So Instagram, Facebook? Facebook, YouTube. We've got to do some YouTube videos as well. So Perfect. Get us up there, too. Got to do YouTube. That works out well. Awesome. Cool. Good yes. build, guys. I like it. Is there a shower or bathroom in here? Uh, outdoor shower off the back, toilet underneath right there. his feet there. No, oh, so that's where There's the... There's a water part. heater, two and a half gallon hot water heater, so... One. On this side? Uh, toilet on this side or this side? Hot water is... In no, the no, direct. no, the toilet wise. Oh, right, underneath right the sink or on this side? Right under there. Okay. Just get the side toilet in there. So that right there is where you can hide your toilet, and you have, well, your outside shower, which we, uh, we saw that when we uh, looked at the uh, water on the outside. I like it. It's really pretty. Wonder wheels, wonder, wonderful wheels. Custom camper vans. Hey there. How you doing? Doing good, how are you today? Doing well, wonderful wheels. Uh, are we specializing in more like on the, the, the custom camper van type of stuff? Yep. Yeah, we specialize in custom. We also have spec builds available as well. Uh, but we do okay. custom builds on all the chassis. So you've got some floor plan layouts probably to help people make, you know, hey, we got this, we got this, exactly. make a simple decision, but then they can customize things as they go. Exactly. Okay, yep. very cool. Looks like you do, you got Ram, you got ProMasters, you got you got Sprinters, and you got Transits. That's right. Understand. Okay. Uh, do you have one of each here? Is that what you have? Uh, not today. No, the transits are kind of hard. Oh, to come transits. By okay. At the moment. Okay. Yeah. They're, 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 uh, I, I actually know. I'm. I'm actually. I live out of Kansas City, uh, and that's where the, a lot of the transits come from. And and yeah. If they're coming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If they're coming. Right. Yeah. So that's a custom build over there. Or or if Amazon doesn't buy them all up. Oh yeah. 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 yeah custom build on this side on the 170 Sprinter. Uh, this is a spec build on the 144, and a spec build on the 159. All right. You mind if I walk through them a little bit? Check just kind of do a quick little thing. Thank you. Yeah. All right, here we go. You got another ProMaster. There you go, get your swivel seats. Um, I really do kind of like their, their claw seats. I think the ProMasters have nice seats, but you've got, there's your fridge, there's your galley, uh, nice little workspace, table swivel, place to sit. Looks like you get access to your garage, uh, storage area. I actually like that woodwork on the walls. That, it just gives it a nice look, actually. I really do like that a lot. Um, they painted it white on the on the roof, but I like how they did not paint it on on the walls. Of course, you got your bed, kind of little shelves in there. Obviously, another you know, seat. Obviously, you can put whatever you want there. There's your control panel. There's your there's your electrical system on that side. There's your water system over there. It looks like you have an outside shower. That's a cool shower head, actually. I like that a lot. Wide, very wide. Now, ProMasters kind of feel like they seem to be a little wider anyways, but that, that is a pretty wide garage space. Um, that's, that's pretty nice. You got lights up on the wall uh, for the bed, and of course your Max fan um, right there. Now, coming over a little bit more different build for your Sprinter. Very kind of a, it's, it's kind of a similar layout to a, to a point. A little bit bigger bench. Almost looks like a little bit wider. Uh, we have, is this a 170? This is a 144. Oh, this is 144, okay. And I wanna show you our special oh. new uh, feature. It's a bench that turns into a bathroom. So you have a toilet that you can use in place and you have a cut shower curtain that hooks to the hooks on the ceiling. You got a- Oh, so nice. So you got your lovely, and I actually, this is my favorite way to go instead of a permanent shower. I like this because you might go on a trip and never touch this thing. And you still have storage, and it's like a wet box, so you can put like muddy boots or ski. There you go. There you go. It. It's just it's super versatile. I like that. This seems to be the way I like the best too, is having kind of that hideaway shower, leaves your van opened up, gives yourself more space. Some of the more permanent built showers, I feel like, almost become a catch-all. Yeah. And they start throwing stuff in there, and then it's not as convenient to even take a shower that, as you would think, because you have so much crap that's in it. Yeah. It's your closet. It's yeah. your storage. It's whatever. Yeah. 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 But that's what I like. Not that, you know, if you got the space yeah. and you want to put the permanent, the 170 extended or whatever it is, then yeah. hey, that's not a bad thing either, but it's yeah. on, on a shorter wheelbase like this one. Yeah, you don't have the space for it. And we always do an outdoor shower because that's great for rinsing off. Absolutely. And then uh, the 170 over there has the indoor one. So now, yeah, okay, there you, you go. That, the that's space. the ones that I think the permanent ones are, are much better yeah, for. Yeah, it's too much space in the small ones. Right, exactly. But also still very nice. Looks like you have access to the, the garage here. There's your bed. 
your overhead. Kind of similar to the ProMaster uh, kind of layout with that. So it's very cool. All right, come on out. That's a dotty. I like that woodwork. I like the wood look. And uh, there you go, big enough for your bike. A little space in your garage to put your mountain bikes. Obviously with the front wheel off, but it's very cool. And of course, when you get into the, 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 the now here's the 170. So now you got a little bit more, uh, the seating's different. So you got additional seating here. Um, the galley's gonna be a little different and you got more of the permanent shower uh, because you have the space to do it. On a 144, shorter type of wheelbase, I don't think those make as much sense. I just don't. But once again, there's a toilet down there. Very nice shower. Um, it doesn't really compromise too much of, of, the, of your openness because you have such open space already in such a big van. Because this is a uh, this is a 170 extended. So this is about as long as they get, really. And there's your huge slide out. A couple, couple bikes on there. And you can just see how far back that, that garage actually goes. Yeah, this is... Uh, no flare, so this is even big enough that bed you're sleeping from uh, this way. You're not sleeping this way, unless you're really short. So there you go. Happy 40th birthday, apparently, somebody's birthday. Who, who's, whose birthday? It's my birthday. There you go, we found the birthday. birthday. Happy 40th birthday? Yes, happy 40th birthday. Happy 40th birthday, what's your name? Jenny, Malcolm. Happy birthday, Jenny. Thank you. This is one bad ambo. This is my mom. Check it out. Can I, can I do can I do a walk through here? Is there yeah. anybody else, any else in there though? We won the competition yesterday. Yeah, they won the do-it-yourself builders. builders. So, uh, Very cool. Yeah. Do-it-yourself builders uh, competition. You won it. Fantastic. You got your $5 reward. Oh, Good. No. no, I'm kidding. That's a joke. No, no, Just joke. I know it was, but we were surprised. Explorer Slam gave us a uh, deploy solar panel, so we got it. Uh, That's pretty cool. I like that. We this is very cool. A week and a half ago, and it took us about a year and a half no, no, to finish it. Yeah, let's take a look. So. All right, so we got we got we got some retractable steps, right? Yes. We're gonna kind of come up so in here. I might take a shot of tequila to celebrate. So. <laughs> it's your birthday. You're allowed to do whatever you want, no this matter if we're recording or not. All in one. Here we are. I went from 1,800 square feet to 100 square feet. So, and uh, there you all go. my stuff's here. All my important stuff. There you go. That's very <laughs> awesome. So you got, you got your bed up there. You got your gallery. You got your nice little kitchen area behind you. Yeah. Got a nice little spot down here, which we have a model showing us what it's like to sit there. There you go. You've got your uh, got you got your shower. shower. Um, Can you access? And, oh, fridge right there. That's a wow. That's a big fridge. And then I have a cooler outside too for beer. Well, well, you got to have that yeah. accessible sure at any spot. The, yeah. yeah. How do you access the? What do you got? Oh, there you go. You get it. There you go. Access into the van. Yeah. More storage up there, I guess. Yeah. Yes, yes, and cool. by, we raised the roof eight inches, so we were able to get all these uppers, which is it was worth it. Even though my husband's tall, I still would have done this no matter what. So. Well, it just opens it up, though, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it does. Um, I want to say, uh, was there an award for the most puck lights in a ceiling? <laughs> that would be us. Because I think, I think well, you won that one. Won, I believe, is what we have. Wow. Right? So. Wow, that's awesome. That's very cool. A couple fans in here, TV. Are you with Storyteller? I am not with Storyteller, but I own a Storyteller. Awesome. Oh, well, that's us, and we also own a Storyteller T-shirt. But <laughs> <laughs> yes, I have I have a couple of those now. Uh, but yeah, we've had a Storyteller for almost a year and a half now. So, Fabulous. but and this is our first uh, van expo, though. Like we've been to other Overland expos, but this yes. is the first you know van-oriented one. So that's very cool. I have to say it is my dream. Um, uh, I will say, as far as um, visual attraction from a distance, I think your van won that too. Like you walk what in a park, you're like, green. what's that thing over there? That red thing over yeah, there. Yeah, that big thing. What is that? <laughs> we must go see it. All right. Well, very cool. Thank you. Thank you for showing me around. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, the mother in law trailer is over there. Too. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. There's all your. Uh, yeah. Oh, it's got a. Yeah, there's all your electrical system. There's a door back here. So is this storage back here? I don't uh, know. It's a water tank. Water tank back here. Okay. Water tank and. Uh, See, yeah, storyteller shirt on too. Very good. Oh, okay. So this is the, this is this is the garage. This says yeah, all the, the catch all the water uh, tank and all that stuff uh, in there. Forty-four gallon fresh water. Oh, that's forty-four gallon. That's a lot of water. We have forty-four gallon gray tank as well. Forty-four forty-four gallon fresh water and forty-four gallon gray water. Gray, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. And, we have the and I saw and I saw the yeah and I saw the uh, the electrical system on that side. That was. Nice. I do have a Ford, so uh, an old 20 year old. Oh, Ford. right, right. You got to have a full tool kit set because you never know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And they're probably metric and standard yeah, sockets. Of course. Yeah. Of course. And then you've. Oh. Uh, accessory thing. Uh, 
uh, we have two uh, boat inflatable kayaks inside there. Nice. My mother-in-law quarters. Yep, mother-in-law quarters. She's over there. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. She let us know what it was. <laughs> uh, this is a, a the stove in here, and yeah, I mean it's just. I mean, so so really, this this is you can just pull this with anything, and you got a whole another way of, of camping yeah. and overlanding with this trailer by itself. Yeah, yeah. This is a Scout. Uh, can't remember the name of it. I changed it to Sasquatch. I took off the Scout logos. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're no longer a Scout. This is. Is being rebranded. This is now a Sasquatch. Oh, there you go. It's a scout. It's a scout trailer, but it's a right. Uh, I know. I was just messing with you. Is that uh, Smitty Belt? Smitty Belt Scout. Oh, gotcha. Okay. And there you go. Uh, you got fuel. You've got uh, propane. And and this is a Smitty Belt Scout trailer, but we uh, it's been rebranded as a, as a, as a Sasquatch. Sasquatch. There you go. Uh, I got my hot water heater. Hot water heater. Restage uh, UV light. Water oh, you got water filtration system even. That's amazing. Um, um, pressure pump. Pressure pump. I gotcha. Okay. What yeah. was what was this before this? It was a, a fire department rescue ambulance. Okay. It's kind of considered a rescue. Gotcha. Go out there, shower. So you got your outdoor shower. Yeah, I saw yeah, the indoor, cassette. and then there's the there's the cassette for the toilet. Gotcha. My poop luggage. Poop luggage. <laughs> That's a good. That's a good day for it. Literally, like wheel over to. As long as they're probably looking at you funny if you got an airplane with that, though. Yeah, no uh, I think this is going to be a check luggage. I'm sorry. Um, we got some. You got steps come down. Steps cut them down to fit in a single door. That's clever. I've actually never seen that. I've never seen anybody do that. <laughs> they're actually easy to do. Uh, these are Toyota Sienna second row seats that we put on. Super comfortable. Way better than the Color Line setup. I, I bet it is. Uh, they got some uh, mega grab handles up there. Those are Agency Those, 6 uh, Econoline oh shit handles. Very cool. We got a spare tire up there. I do. Oh, you got your ladder on the side here, too. Yeah, okay. Ladder on each side, yeah. Oh, on each side. It needs to be symmetrical. I think that tire be really hard to get down. Well, to. actually, there's just I a tire. There's, down to my wife. There's, no, there's no rim on there. There's no. It's just a oh. tire. Right. These are, uh, these are Hutchinson double B lock wheels so we can air these down to uh, zero psi and they'll stay on and then if i blow it i can just have, hence my tools i can take it apart put the spare on and we're on the road and then you don't have the weight of the extra wheel correct what, on, on heavy heavy right right that that's funny though yeah you grab the tire you just throw it down to the wife I, that's <laughs> funny that's good hopefully she can catch it we'll see how it <laughs> here it catch Where's your wife? Uh, she's somewhere between the tire and the grass. She's here somewhere. No, uh, awesome bumper on the front, even as well. That's that stout as can be. And you got your Sasquatch. There, you know that's perfect. That's perfect. I love that. The lights even. Nice, nice upgrade. These are Vantage optics. Uh, he's out of Southern Cal, Scott. Super cool dude. Makes super cool lights. These are HIDs. I like them. Uh, I'm sure that's a, a <laughs> nice. They're life changing. Yeah. For, for an Econoline, headlights are usually horrible, and these are fantastic. No, no pun intended, but I'm sure they're night and day difference between the factory lights that would come on this thing. Correct. <laughs> Correct. Uh, got your Baja design? Uh, yeah, these are Baja Pods? design uh, squadron minis. What's think. what size winch is that? What, what's the what's uh, the foliage on that? That's an Iron Man 12,000 pound winch. 12,000. Okay. A joke because I just tell people I got this winch so I could pull Jeeps when we're out of my way, <laughs> when we're like on the Rubicon or whatever. And just get those out of the way so I get by. Yeah. That's not gonna pull me anywhere. Well, maybe if you're level and not stuck. Yeah, maybe if I- How much did you know how much this weighs? Uh, too much. This is an over waiter, not an overlander. <laughs> uh, we are we are booking in like 16,000 pounds. Okay, it. it's got some good weight to it. Yeah. That's a good point. And if you guys haven't realized on the, the red, obviously it looks cool just being a red, but you've like, what'd you do? Like Raptor line, this Rhino all, line this whole this thing? This is all tunable Raptor liner. Yeah, look at that. Approximately. Uh oh, you missed the Sasquatch badge. To... I like the Ford badge. You gotta, oh, okay. I got the Ford badge. Okay, I'm just I actually, this is a, This is the newer grill. This is the older hood on a newer, <laughs> 2002, 2003. That's funny. <laughs> just That's so funny. I can put my Ford logo on it. There you go. Well, uh, I mean, 30, 32, 32 liters of Raptor liner on here. Oh my goodness. 
course. I like your, uh, your way you integrated your light bar up there as well. Um, Looks really good. I'm I, assuming you got a full, what is that, a full roof rack like deck up there probably? That's all solar, my solar panels. Okay, uh, full solar up there. Yeah, 1,480 watts of solar. That's a lot of, that's a lot of solar. On the roof, and then the, we have a Dometic RTX 2000 tucked in there, and then an Emotion Starlink. What's your battery capacity in this thing? 600 amp hours. Okay, and that, that solar is gonna charge the heck out of that all the time. It does it fantastically. Yeah. Very quickly. So you never got to plug in. You don't necessarily have to drive around just to charge it. it that, that'll pretty yeah. much take care of it. We can unless, drive around. Unless you're in a cave. It. Yeah, we can drive around and charge it. Yeah. Well, cool. This is awesome. I like it. I love seeing new things. Whole and, thing and it, is my lightsaber antenna. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. There's the, there's the uh, steel in the show right there. That's how I won this whole thing. That's right, that's what it was. <laughs> like, well, it's a tie between, oh, what do they got there? You guys won. Got it. No, got, no, got you're it. good, you're good. <laughs> awesome, well, thank you so much. Hey, thank you very much for uh, sticking with us. And uh, what do you think of the van builds? I mean, what's your favorite van build? Please tell us in the comments below which one, if you went out and purchased one of those today, which one would you go with? I'm really kind of curious to see uh, what it is because I've got a few of my favorites in there too, outside of the fact of the storytellers uh, I know we didn't do a big walkthrough here because we got a big walkthrough in our own van that we're going to be doing and showing you. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel to stay up to date with us. Uh, and uh, once again, if you, if you enjoyed watching this uh, and you know some other people who would think would enjoy this, like this and share it to them. Thanks again for watching. We are signing out for the day for Craving Cars. I'm Corey Pratz. We will see you next time. But remember to all your cravers out there, keep craving. <laughs>